Good day guys, a little while ago they made VMware Workstation Pro free for personal use. So today I thought we'll go through how to actually download it since it's a little bit hidden on their site, install it and set up a Windows XP VM. We'll be doing all of this on our Lenovo 500e Gen 2 Chromebook running Windows Tiny 10 64-bit. As you can see this is a fairly low-end Chromebook with a quad-core Intel Celeron N4100 CPU and only 4 gig of RAM. To get started, we'll go to broadcom.com and we do need to first create an account in order to download VMware. So on the top right, click on support portal and register. If you already have an account, you can obviously skip this step. So once you've put in your details and click register, you should be on this page. And you can just click I'll build my profile later. Once you've registered, you should be on the support.broadcom webpage. And just a note with registering, it does want to verify your email, so make sure you use an active email address for that. Now we want to log in on the top right. And just use the email and password you just created. So once you've finally logged in, at uh, the top right, next to your username, just click the little drop down. We want to select VMware Cloud Foundation. On the left hand side, we want to click My Downloads. downloads you want to scroll down to VMware Workstation Pro and we want to download VMware Workstation Pro 17 for personal use Windows because we are using Windows and I want the English 1761 You will need to click I agree. And also when going to download, uh, it does mention screening required. That just means when you click it, it'll ask for, for more details, your home address and things like that. But it doesn't seem to be verified. So click screening required, click yes. Once you've verified your details, we'll be back on this page. And once again, just click download. And that's it, it is downloading now. We'll come back when it's finished. Once it's finished downloading, we can close that off. And we'll open up our downloads folder. There it is there. And we'll just install it, double click. Just click yes. We just wanna go next. I accept, next. And we will add the console tools to the system path, so go next. I don't want to join that. I don't want to check for updates. Go next. Yep, we want desktop and a start menu entry. Next. And install. And we'll just click finish. We can close that off. And we should have a new icon on the desktop, which we selected. So we'll just go to that. And when it asks for a license, just click use VMware Workstation 17 for personal use. So basically you can't be using this in an office or in a commercial environment as it mentions. But for at home, just messing around or if you're just learning, perfect. And click continue. And finish. And that's it installed. Now, it may be a little bit scary trying to set up your first VM. So we'll go through it together and we will be setting up a Windows XP VM. So click on create a new virtual machine. Keep it as typical. For the installer, I will select my Windows XP ISO. And it did detect that it's Windows XP Professional, which is good. Click Next. Keep all that uh, as default. Click Next. We'll keep it as 40 gig. It uh, doesn't start off as 40 gig unless you click Allocate it all now, but we won't. So it starts off very small and expands as needed. We'll split it into multiple files. Again, we're not going to be copying it anywhere, so that's fine. Go next. And power on the machine after creation. You can see it's automatically allocated 512 mega RAM. If you went to uh, customization instead of default settings at the start of the wizard, uh, you can pick all that, but just for now, that's fine. You can change it later very easily.
And from here, you just set Windows XP up uh, as you would on a physical hardware. Just as a note, uh, I haven't clicked on it yet, so it hasn't captured my mouse and keyboard. But if I click on it, then my mouse and keyboard's gone. To release it, it's Control and Alt together. And it's back. So press Enter, F8. And I will create partition. So C, press Enter, press Enter again. Format it uh, NTFS quick. We don't want to do a full format. Once it's finished copying files, it'll want to reboot. You can leave it for 10 seconds or just press enter. While it is installing, we will have a look at our task manager. And see uh, how much it's throttling the CPU. So it's not doing too bad. We're looking at about 60% average. Oh, we've gone down now. And still pretty low RAM usage. So it just goes to show you don't need a super high-end computer to run some basic VMs or low-end VMs. It's definitely possible on low-end hardware. After a few minutes of setup, you'll have to start entering some settings. So I'll see all default and go next. For name, I'll just call it SJSL Tech. Leave organization blank. Now I'll enter my product key. And then on the next page, uh, we'll leave the computer name as it is. We'll try and leave the admin password blank. And it did let us do that. I'll leave all the times and dates uh, as it is. I might change the time zone. Sydney. And click next. For the network, we'll just keep it typical. Next. At the end of the video, I will show you how to customize your VM, including changing the network adapter properties, changing the RAM, adding drives and disks, and all that kind of stuff. So it's restarted by itself, and it looks like it's our first boot. So click OK. Click yes, it just resized the uh, resolution. And there's our uh, first boot video. So I will just click um, close on the little pop-up at the bottom asking, um, basically once you finish installing, click uh, I finished installing. I'm pretty sure when you click I finished installed, I finished installing, it will try and install VMware tools to the VM, uh, which does give you extra features like clipboard access so you can copy and paste from the host to the VM and back and forward. A uh, seamless mouse, although the latest version of VMware does have seamless mouse, as you can see. As I move off it, it goes back to my host and automatically back into it. So I don't have to press Ctrl and Alt to capture. But in older versions, that's what uh, clicking that used to do. I never really use it, I always uh, click a little cross. So we'll go next. Not right now. Skip. Not this time. Call it SJSL Tech, first username, next, and finish. Out of the box with Windows XP, you do have sound and basic drivers. Let's we'll have a look. I haven't used XP for a while, so hopefully I don't uh, don't forget too many things. Pretty sure administration tools. No, we're under system, and then hardware device manager. So I don't have a proper graphics uh, driver. I'm not sure what base system device is. But you can obviously install that as you would normally. Actually, maybe VMware Tools uh, does come with the drivers for it. So you could just right click uh, install VMware Tools. Ah, okay. It doesn't just prefer legacy operating systems. So if you use an older version of VMware Workstation, I think 15 had it uh, in there. And you could do that, but not really needed, and you can, as I mentioned, you can install the drivers uh, manually. It does have sound, although my uh, host Chromebook, I didn't bother paying for the driver, and I don't have my Bluetooth speakers connected. So there's your Windows XP VM all set up. You can go fairly high, but this is 1366 by 768. Now at the top of the screen, there is a little enter full screen mode. And there is 
a pin there. If you click on the pin, it becomes pretty much seamless. So now it looks like I've got a Windows XP uh, PC. That usually goes away. And then obviously to get it back, just uh, scroll at the top. You can pin it back, you can exit full screen. Oops, that one. Change the resolution back a little bit smaller. That looks a bit uh, shoddy. A bit better. So now it's all installed. Uh, you can just go start shut down as you would normally. You can also right click on the tab, power and hard shut down. On this little tab here, if you go to removable device and you can um, pass host hardware through to it. So for example, I've got a flash drive plugged in. Oops, it did disappear. Uh, so when it's turned on, um, you can go removable devices and you can pass uh, hardware. Well, power back on, we'll show you. So removable devices, you can change the uh, ISO. So if you go settings, go browse image files and you can change what um, what image is, is passed through. So this is DOS box, or bootable DOS box, I believe. Click OK. Windows XP sees it as a native uh, CD, CD-ROM. There it is there. So that's very handy. And the same with flash drives, so removable devices. Here's all the devices that it detects, so I can pass through my uh, Bluetooth card, which is pretty cool. That is uh, on board on the Chromebook. But I think super top mass storage is my little micro SD card reader. It's a USB one. If I click connect, it will show up in the VM. So very, very handy for that kind of stuff. The network adapter, by default, uh, we selected NAT, NAT. Uh, so basically, it doesn't take an additional IP off your uh, host network. But it also means you can't RDP into it if you use that. If you did want to remote into the VM, uh, like remote desktop, or it was Linux and you wanted to SSH in, you wouldn't be able to do that with NAT out of the box. Instead, you'd want to go bridge, and that acts as if it's physically connected to your home network as a separate device, and it has its own IP that you can connect into. But for most cases, you just keep it as NAT or no network at all. You can uh, disconnect it so it's, it appears offline. So we'll power it back off. You can just go power, shut down. But I do prefer to shut it down cleanly. You can also take snapshots. So you go snapshot, take snapshot, and you could call it, for example, fresh Windows XP install. And that way, if you mess anything up, you can right click, go back to snapshot, and revert to an old uh, image and it acts as if it's just been installed which is very very handy. Now to change the hardware or the system specs you can just uh, click on whatever you want on the left so memory and you can drag it up and down. Uh, it looks like it's a max of 128 gig on this version. I obviously don't have that much RAM and because it knows it's a Windows XP it automatically recommended 512 and that's what it was set at. You can also enter it up here if you wanted to. But we'll keep the RAM as it is so I'll click cancel bring it back up. You can change the amount of processors. Again, uh, it's more of an advanced feature. You wouldn't need to do it for old VMs. Uh, hard drive size. You can change the ISO in here as well if you wanted to, all that uh, kind of stuff. You can add devices. So if you wanted uh, a second CD-ROM or optical drive, you could add a second one. So you've got CD1, CD2. It's pretty handy depending on what you're doing. Uh, parallel port, serial port, all that kind of fun stuff. Under options, you can change basic settings, uh, what OS you're using, all that kind of stuff. Again, most people would keep this off unless you're an advanced user or you're having an issue with a specific um, OS. You pretty much would never touch this anyway. I think that'll do it for today. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Otherwise, thanks for watching.